Hello, so I'm going to explain chapter 22 today, uh, do a quick run through of the general ideas in the chapter. I know some of you have already started it or maybe finished, if that's so then you can just carry on from where you're up to, that's great, just keep going. Um, this will help for people who've not yet started it and maybe don't remember some of the parts of it. So I just thought I'd explain, it's called Geometrical Vocabulary and Construction, which makes it sound a bit confusing, but it's not. Uh, the first thing we come across is the congruence and similarity on page 284. So here they're talking about it in terms of triangles, but and you've got the explanations on the page, but I thought I'd explain it quickly because um, it might help you out. So congruence, um, this means the shape has the same sized angles and the same side lengths. So really it's pretty much identical to the first shape. So if I had a triangle like this, maybe this is two centimeters, this is five, and this is four. Um, then if I have another triangle that's congruent, then we can already tell what all the side lengths are. So same lengths, so then this one must be the same. So this one's two centimeters, and this one's five, and this one's four. So they just match up. And the reason we don't say identical, we say congruent, is because it's been flipped and moved slightly. But it's the same size, same lengths, same angles, so it's congruent. Um, so they'll ask you questions to identify different sides, how big they are, or different angles. And all you do is you match it up with the one you've been given. So that's really easy. Um, it might ask you to find pairs of congruent things, so you just find the ones that match. Uh, similarity, so similar shapes. Um, their angles are the same size, so same angles, but their lengths might change, so the lengths are probably changed. Uh, so that just means if we have a triangle again, let's say again two, four, and five, then it might have just been made twice as big. Sorry for my terrible drawings. So this one's 8, 10, and 4. So it's just been made twice as big. Um, the angles will have stayed the same size, but it's been made twice as big. Sometimes they'll ask you questions, um, again, about finding the size of different shapes, and they'll ask you for a scale factor. So that's how much bigger it is. So in that one, it was twice as big. I'll do another example question. So maybe you might get uh, a triangle like this. Sometimes what they like to do is they like to join two triangles together like this. So you have this small triangle here and let's say it's uh, five again. Let's go three this time and we'll go six. And then it'll tell you that this length here is now um, Let's say it's 4.5 centimeters. So we want to know how much, so, well, we're comparing this small triangle to this big triangle. So it's the sort of contained within each other. And we want to see how we go from one to the other. So the only ones that match is this three to this 4.5. So the scale factor, we have three times something, it's 4.5. So you should be able to work out that that's the scale factor equals 1.5. So then we just use that on the other ones. So 6 times 1.5 is going to be 9. So, sorry, the whole thing is 9. So for the whole way up here, it's 9, which means this, this bit here is 3. And then if we do it for the 5, then 5 times 1.5, can't see that at the bottom, equals 7.5. So this bit's 2.5. And the whole thing is 7.5. Um, that's as hard as it'll, hard as it'll get, really. Um, but it's quite congruence and similarity, quite straightforward things. You just have to make sure you take your time and realise which bits match up. Okay, then we move on from uh, the congruence and similarity and we come to quadrilaterals, which I, don't, I hope I don't need to explain much about because you've been doing these since primary school. There's a table for you to fill in. It should be quite easy. Just take time, make sure you check your answers. Um, and then nets, again, 
you just have to uh, sort of imagine them unfolded. The one that a few people asked me about was a tetrahedron. So this isn't to do with constructed triangles, but I'll just write it, a tetrahedron. And they were saying, is this a 13-sided shape? Is this, what is this? It's not, it's a shape you've all seen before quite a lot, but you might have called it a triangular-based pyramid. So, sort of like this. Um, so instead of a square-based pyramid, it is triangular-based, but this is official name. Okay, so just bear that in mind. And then, after all that, we get onto the constructing triangles, which you'll have done before. Um, you should know how to construct four different types of triangle, but in this chapter, it only wants you to construct one, and we call it SSS, which stands for side, 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 because they give you the three sides. So it might say construct this triangle and have uh, six and seven and eight meters. Um, no, let's say centimeters. So what you do is you make the base, usually the longest one. So you draw a line eight centimeters using a ruler, obviously, um, not doing it horribly like I am. Then you would put your compass on the end and you mark all the points that are seven centimeters away. So you set your compass to seven centimeters and you should get a nice arc like this. Then you go to the other side, um, put your compass here, set it to six centimeters, and you mark all the bits that are six centimeters away. And they should cross at a certain point and you just join these up with your ruler. And although this looks terrible, because I'm just sketching, um, when you do it, you'll get an accurate triangle. And it just asks you to do a few of them, so it should be pretty easy. Uh, again, the instructions are in the book if I went too fast there, or you can just rewind and rewatch, that's fine. Um, the scale drawings afterwards. So a couple of people asked me about these, so I thought I'd do some quick examples. Um, so 1b, it says, in the following questions, both the scale to which a map is drawn and the distance between two objects on the map are given. Find the real distance between the two objects, giving your answer in metres. So the first one has a ratio of 1 to 10,000. So that's the scale. And then it says 2.5 centimetres. So the 2.5 centimetres is how far away they are on the map. Um, so that's the small version. So we want to find out what it is in real life. So what we've done is we have 2.5 here now. So to get there, we just times by 2.5. So we're going to times this by 2.5. So we're going to get 25,000. That's one way of doing it. Or you could think if 1 is 10,000, 2 is 20,000. So 1 equals 10, 1 equals 10,000. 2 equals 20,000. So 2.5 is 25,000. Uh, different ways of doing it. But we get 25,000 centimetres. So what is that in real life? 25,000 centimetres. Well, if we divide by 100, we get 250 metres. Um, and you could do 0 0.25 kilometres. What does the question ask for? Oh, it gives it ask for in metres. So you'd stick at this one. Um, so that's 1B. If I'm going to do 2C now. Again, it's the map, the true distance is given this time. So the scale we're using is 1 to 50,000, and the true distance is 4 kilometers. Okay, so I'm going to change this. It wants us to give our answer in centimeters, so I'm going to change 4 kilometers to centimeters straight away. So 4 kilometers equals 4,000 meters. Um, and then we times it by 100, so we get four, uh, what do we get? 400,000 uh, centimetres. Now, so now we want to know how many lots of this go into 400,000. So 400,000 divided by 50,000. So there's two 50,000s in 100,000, so there's eight overall. So... If we know there's eight lots of this, eight lots of this, so it's just eight centimeters would be your answer. So it's like we times this by eight 
to get to 400,000, so we times this by 8 to get our 8 centimetres. Um, so hopefully that will help you out with the other ones. Um, and then you've got some slightly trickier ones, but if you just use the same sort of methods, you should be okay. So the work to be done. Um, just It's quite a small chapter, so I want you to complete the chapter. And complete the chapter. Looking through it, there's we start off on the uh, triangles. You can do all of them because there's not many. And then there's this big table for the quadrilaterals. Um, just quickly sketch the table. You don't have to draw it out neatly. Just make sure you do that because it should be pretty quick once you've got the table drawn. The nets, again, a quick sketch should be quite quick. I think it's good practice to do the triangles, so I'm going to say all of them as well. Um, you can do just a few, just the left column for exercise 22.5. So all questions, left column of 22.5. Um, and then the student assessment is not very big. So we'll say, what we'll do is we'll hand in the student assessment in Google Classrooms. So hand in student assessment. Oh, why do you spell assessment? To assess, to us. Hand in student assessment on Google Classrooms. And I have not thought of the best way to do that yet. I think maybe it's just easiest to take a picture of your work because uh, it's harder to put the maths online. For for English and stuff, you can type, but for maths, it's a bit trickier. So maybe just taking a picture, um, but if we can improve that later, then we will do. And if we can improve the channel in any way, then I'm open for subject suggestions. Um, if you've got any questions about this topic, then put them in the comments and I'll see them. Uh, yeah, good luck.